Okay, so the question today is, um, why should I worship white Jesus? I'm not really sure what the context is. In other words, is it you don't want to because he's white or because he's a man or he lived 2,000 years ago or um, what exactly is it? Is it worship? What exactly is the issue? Now, the whole thing that I have trouble with is because of the wording of I don't want to worship white Jesus, I don't know how to answer it. So let's go through these items. Uh, was Jesus white? What difference does it make? You had Dr. Martin Luther King who was a minister and he used the Christian Bible. And Dr. King basically said, what the hell difference does it make what color people's skins are? Judge a person based upon the quality of their character. So, um, I don't know what else to tell you. If you really are concerned, you know, people saying that Jesus was white, well, I don't know where you're going to go with that, uh, you know, where you're going to go with that. Anyway, the next question is, do you need to worship Jesus? What does worship mean? Sounds like fawn over. You know, one time I was in a bar in Vancouver and Lady Gaga was in the bar. And there were a bunch of young twinks that were fawning all over her. I didn't go over to say Lady Gaga. She had just hit the scene and um, I didn't know who she was. Somebody said that's Lady Gaga and I'd heard uh, there's some singer named it was when she was brand new in her career anyways I didn't go over she was a tiny little thing she was cute and all the little gay twinks were around her fawning over her because they knew who she was um, do you think Jesus if he was here today would want you to treat him like a celebrity Uh, no. If you look at the Jesus story, in fact, quite a lot of times Jesus had had enough of people. I've had enough. And um, he would go out into the desert. He would get away from people as much as he could. Because just like today, people are a damn pain in the ass. So, um, I really can't see Jesus, Jesus asking you to treat him like he was Lady Gaga or something. Uh, um, next question is um, about Jesus' religion. Well, as far as we can tell, uh, Jesus was a Essene, which, um, what would they be like today? Um, some ideas of what the Essenes were like. Uh, on the West Coast, like in British Columbia, Canada, uh, we are told that the Aboriginal people lived in long houses, multiple families in a big house. That's very Essene-like. The Essenes uh, didn't have private property. They shared communally. So... Um, they were very unlike us, you know. In our Western society, everybody, you know, owns their car, owns their house, owns their furniture, and so um, a very different kind of uh, upbringing. Uh, what else do we want to say? Was uh, Jesus a Christian? No, no, he wasn't. He was an Essene. Somebody wants to know if Essenes were Jewish. Um, 
Well, they said when, you know, when they called Jesus rabbi, which is kind of a Jewish name for teacher, and he seemed to know Jewish law. So if he was a Jew, then he wasn't a Christian. So what about Jesus and religion? If you have something against the Christian religion, um, well, I don't know about you. I have things against the Christian religion. Yes, I do. Uh, mostly because uh, people who said they were Christians, uh, persecuted me quite a bit because of um, being gay. And even to this day, you know, the Roman Catholic Church still frowns upon people being gay. Um, the Christian Church uh, in the deep south of the USA were told uh, didn't say too much about uh, white people having uh, slaves. So, you know, Christian history is not very good. Um, stories about Christian people having a Spanish Inquisition where they tortured people. Um, killing off the Cathars in southern France. Um, burning witches at the stake. Um, so the Christian religion really doesn't have a very good reputation. But were those people that said they were Christian um, like Jesus? No, they were not. Not at all. I was listening to a YouTube by um, spiritual teacher uh, Aaron Abke on YouTube and one of the titles of his um, videos is Why I Left Christianity for Jesus. So it seems that um, Christianity doesn't do a very good job of uh, teaching Jesus teachings. It does a lot of good for people who are very good students and um, look between the lies to really get at the man Jesus. How about um, getting upset because people uh, proselytize, in other words, keep talking about Jesus? Is that something that upsets you? I guess it depends on what exactly are they saying about Jesus. I mean, if it's one of these televangelist kind of people, they're on television and they've got a huge ministry and they always have their hand out and say, you send money, send money, or, uh, the, oh, the really stupid thing about these kind of people is, um, you know, they have these faith healing things. You know, you go to one of their traveling road shows and the minister goes up there and, you know, out, out, foul spirit. That was the Reverend Ain uh, Ernest Angley back in the 1980s. Um, 
Well, the weirdest thing about these so-called healing ministries is, um, well, you can bet their you can bet your boots that they close themselves down during COVID nineteen. You know, if there was such a good healing ministry, then they should have been able to remove COVID nineteen from planet Earth. Could Jesus remove COVID-19 from Earth? Uh, I don't know. I mean, there's stories about Jesus healing the sick and raising the dead. Certainly we would be a nice thing to be able to do. But, you know, these Christian churches certainly don't do that. So, yeah, I guess I would say, you know, whatever they're teaching, they're certainly not teaching um, how to raise the dead and, uh, you know, cure the lepers. So, does that really mean that there's nothing in the Jesus teachings that is worthwhile? Uh, Thomas Jefferson, who was one of the early presidents of the USA, felt this way. So what he did is he got his uh, Bible out, and he got an X-Acto knife or a razor blade out, and he cut out everything in the Jesus sections, that would be the four Gospels, he cut out everything to do with miracles because he didn't see it in his church. Nothing was happening that way. So he cut everything out that was about miracles, and then he went to um, the stuff that was left. It was not miracle-related as far as uh, things that Jesus said. And he liked that abridged version of the Bible because he found that, that some of the things that uh, Jesus said really resonated with him. So, you know, if you're not really concerned about performing miracles, apparently, at least Thomas Jefferson felt that uh, Jesus had um, some really good um, teachings. And what about if you really want to get mystical about Jesus? In other words, you're really interested in his mysteries, and you're still curious if it's possible to do miracles like what he claimed to do. How would you go about investigating that? You're going to have to go to Hawaii. Huh? Yeah. You're going to have to go to Hawaii and or... Um, this is more difficult because Hawaii is a pretty small place, but um, what about going to, let's say, India? Huh? Well, if you're going to find someone who can perform things that to a Western mind we would call miracles, then if you went to Hawaii, if you could find a bona fide Hawaiian kahuna. What's that got to do with Jesus? Um, well, the kahunas were doing healing before the Christian missionaries even came to the islands of Hawaii. So, you know, if you're looking for somebody who can do things like setting a bone, in other words, someone breaks a bone, goes to see a kahuna, and... Um, walks away from the kahuna's hut, I don't know, maybe like four hours later, walking on a perfectly good leg. Um, those are the stories of the, the kahunas, the healing kahunas can do. So, how are you going to be able to find one of those in Hawaii? Um, well, the thing was that when the Christian missionaries came to Hawaii and the governments that followed which were pretty much the USA, um, 
they persecuted the Hawaiian kahunas. So the kahunas had to go underground. No one would, was even allowed to call themselves a kahuna. So uh, it really became um, hidden. And I don't know about today if you're going to find anybody who is a healing kahuna who's got, you know, a little clinic with the word kahuna above the clinic. Because I don't think it's illegal today to call yourself that. But uh, I think um, the Hawaiian people have really had enough with Haole government. Haole is a Hawaiian word that means without breath, and it usually refers to white people. No breath because um, no spirit, basically. Spiritless people. No breath. And then as far as going to India, a uh, lot of stories out of India. Now, you've got a billion people in India. How many people out of that billion are going to be bona fide um, spiritual masters who could do something like, you know, miraculous healings? Uh, I haven't been to India, but my guess is there's going to be an awful lot of sham artists. Just like there is, you know, I live in Canada. Do we have faith? Not really. Even Christianity is really a lot less than it was, you know, at the time when I was born. Uh, Christianity has really fallen off the shelf. People just don't go to churches. Um, so if you go to India to try and find a legitimate, bona fide, spiritual person who could do these kind of things, it might be possible. It might be possible. I told you I haven't been, but the reason I say it might be possible is because if you have a genuine intent, a fully open mind, and you really feel inspired to research this topic, you know, and you wait for the quarantine to be over, you hop on a plane and uh, you go to India at the very least you're going to have a hell of an interesting adventure and maybe you will find something for you to bite your teeth into that makes you feel like continuing your pursuit into doing the kind of things that seem really far-fetched, even for Jesus.